He's got a laser back, laser back, laser back. He's got a laser back, laser back, laser back. Got these laser back ribs. Sorry for the cringe opening. This is Matt with State of Flux with the final installment of my Godzilla reviews, this time discussing Shin Godzilla. And uh, as cringe, honestly, and uh, uh, fun as that opening there was, it's far more fun than you'll have watching this movie. That said, that is not a detriment to the film. This film is damn near perfect. Legitimately perfect. I loved this movie. This is my, like, top-tier Godzilla. And it's because they take something that you're familiar with, and they're not afraid to play with it and to change it. Shin Godzilla is, much like the original film, a kind of textbook case of how you take real-world catastrophe and therapeutically dissect it through art. This film is unique in that it has no real characters. Like, yeah, there are characters that you get familiar with throughout the film, but the, the center focus on this film isn't character. However, Godzilla only has about 15 to 20 minutes of screen time. You're spending almost all of your time with people, but the people are just... This is a boardroom, like, discussion panel film in the sense that you have the Godzilla monster that appears, and this film explores the ineptitude and inaction of bureaucratic political maneuvering. And it was written in response to the earthquake in, I want to say, 2011 Japan that created uh, or a nuclear disaster. And the governmental inaction to do anything until the problem evolved outside or beyond their control and then they were forced to act. And this film takes that and runs with it. Much like the original film where Godzilla was an allegory for the ghost of the atomic past, Godzilla is an allegory for the ever-evolving problem that the government is failing to deal with because of fear of judgment of doing something wrong. And in doing nothing, they do everything wrong. And it's fascinating. But the most fascinating thing about this is how it evolves the idea of Godzilla. Godzilla is shown throughout this film in several different stages or phases. The first time you see him, he's kind of like this larval tail monster thing in the sea. And that's kind of interesting. But when you see him next, the full-on shot of Godzilla running at the camera is one of the most haunting and terrifying images I have ever seen on in a movie. Legitimately, freaked me the F out the first time I saw it. And that stage of Godzilla is sort of like the sea creature coming to land first finding its legs. And it's like, has no body control. It's floppy, it's erratic. And it's got gills that are learning to breathe air. So it's just gushing pools of blood around the city. Blood is everywhere. And still, the government fails to act. And then, the next time we see the monster, it stands upright and does nothing except for lumber across the city. And this is the Godzilla that we're most familiar with, by and large. This is the closest looking to the Godzilla we're familiar with, outside of its red skin tone and maybe slimmer arms. And the government fails to intervene. And then the next time we see Godzilla is his most chaotic form. And this is the form that we're familiar with in the sense that it has power like a dragon blasting fire breath from its mouth. 
But then it goes beyond that and we see something unique. So it does something that we've not seen before. First it splits his jaws, sort of like the, uh, the vampires in Blade 2. Um, and it has true fire breath. And it has lasers that shoot out of the back. And the special effects in this movie are very, very strong. Uh, this is a great looking movie across the board. I love how Godzilla looks each time. When he's an active evolution and his skin is rippling, that looks a little shoddy, a little TV quality, but everything else I think looks genuinely good, very strong film quality. Um, and then we see Godzilla one more time where he's growing to a different form. And that form looks genuinely terrifying, especially the final shot we get of the movie as it's uh, coursing up the tail. And it makes me want to see more. And it looks like that probably isn't going to happen. There is another Godzilla movie slated for literally later this year, this November. Um, but uh, I don't think it's going to be a continuation of this iteration of Godzilla. But what this film offered me most is promise that even a 60 year old franchise 70 year old uh, at this point can still evolve to be relevant to be important to be something unique and insightful and terrifying uh, and I look forward to the next iteration of the Japanese Godzilla, as well as obviously the legendary one. I really enjoyed Godzilla vs. Kong, but um, this film won Best Picture in the uh, Japanese equivalent to their Academy Awards, and it appears to be deservingly so. This is a masterful film that is compelling beyond anything I've ever seen. Watching the people just sit there and discuss back and forth the uh, pros and cons of intervening and attacking Godzilla is just true fascination. I, I, I couldn't look away. And the runtime just slips by. This is over two hours, two hours and two minutes or something like that. And maybe it's exactly two hours. It slides by faster than any of the other Godzilla movies that I'd seen beforehand. Some of those are only like 88 minutes and stuff. So that says something. The quality of time and experience and dialogue and performance. Per, uh, the performances of some of these cats are, re are really, really strong, uh, especially the uh, Japanese woman who's representing the United States. Uh, my understanding is she didn't know English. And she does a pretty solid job, but I really like the weight of uh, humanity that she kind of carries with her, especially towards the end of the film. Uh, she's quite good. Uh, as well as the Prime Minister. Prime Minister is probably the character you get closest to uh, until she, it kind of pivots to her and the, uh, the other guy. But this, as much as it is a dialogue-driven film, not unlike uh, an Aaron Sorkin kind of drama, it's not a character-driven one because you don't really spend time with very specific people. You spend time with specific ideologies that are ever-present in our society with regards to enacting change, positive or negative, on the forces around us, even if that force around us could do extreme damage. Uh, this is something we live with in the United States all the time, with gun control and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, seeing it through the lens of uh, the how the Japanese experienced that tragedy in 2011 uh, and seeing it through that prism is kind of interesting because our media played a different story with regard to that and uh, kind of praised at times governmental action uh, that Japan took with regards to that tragedy, um, especially in the later days of it. So seeing uh, the, from the perspective of uh, a filmmaker from Japan who lived it uh, is, is always kind of interesting. 
Um, but this is a easy four-star movie. This came out in 2016 and made my top five movies of the year list, uh, which maybe I'll explore someday. But there you have it. That's my Godzilla, uh, final Godzilla review as of now. Uh, coming up next for you uh, will be my ranking of every Godzilla movie uh, that's live action. So there you have it. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this film in the comments down below. And what do you think Godzilla was evolving into next? I've seen some, uh, after the film ended, I went down the rabbit hole of what uh, was posited, what filmmakers said, and stuff like that. And uh, I had some pretty gnarly ideas, some that I really wish I could have uh, uh, seen explored further. But let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Do all that good stuff. And peace.